Well, after his son's dramatic evidence yesterday, all those watching the inquiry waited with bated breath as Mr Murdoch Sr took the stand. And he didn't disappoint, lifting the lid on decades of behind-the-scenes influence over a succession of Prime Ministers. He also sparked a furious row with former Prime Minister Gordon Brown into the bargain, as our political editor Gary Gibbon reports. For decades, British politicians were drawn to him. His papers, especially The Sun, seen as the key to winning elections. That power brought unrivalled access, unrivalled influence, or so we thought. Rupert Murdoch was today summoned to the Leveson inquiry into the press, itself triggered by the disgrace of his own newspapers, caught hacking on an industrial scale. I swear by Almighty God. But on oath, the, the media magnate said repeatedly that he had never sought commercial favours from politicians. He'd simply talked politics or family stuff with prime ministers through the decades. I've never asked a prime minister for anything. You are completely oblivious to the commercial benefits to your company of a particular party winning an election. Absolutely. Is that really the position? Yes, absolutely. Rupert Murdoch suggested the meetings with political leaders, including the present Prime Minister, were usually at their request. David Cameron interrupting his own holidays to fly to Mr Murdoch's yacht off Greece in 2008. Mr Cameron might have thought stopping in Santorini would impress me. Um, I don't really remember the meeting, but uh, I think that's part of the democratic process. They, all politicians of all sides, like to have their views known by the editors of newspapers or publishers, uh, hoping that they will be uh, put across, hoping that they will be, that, that they will succeed in impressing people. That's the game. Rupert Murdoch said relations with Gordon Brown moved from children's playdates and private dinners to a giant fallout when the Sun backed the Tories in the autumn of 2010 and Gordon Brown phoned Rupert Murdoch. He said, and I must stress, no voices were raised. We were talking more quietly than you and I are now. Um, the he said, well, your, your company has made, declared war on my government and we have no alternative but to make war on your company. And I said, I'm sorry about that, Gordon. Thank you for calling. End of subject. Now, how, how could Mr. Brown have declared <coughs> war on your company? I don't know. I don't think he was in a very balanced state of mind. Gordon Brown insisted in a statement there was no such phone call, no such threat, and Rupert Murdoch should have the good grace to withdraw his allegation. Rupert Murdoch said he'd never lent on Margaret Thatcher to acquire Times newspapers back in the 80s and never asked Tony Blair, godfather to one of his young daughters, to help him with his business needs. Didn't you sense in these discussions you were having with senior politicians before a general election, that a sort of form of pirouette or negotiation was occurring, and they wanted to know how far they had to go. You're on. making sinister inferences. No, it's not, it's not I want to say, Mr. Jay, that I, in 10 years of his power there, never asked Mr. Blair for anything, nor indeed did I receive any favours. And then if you want to check that, I think you should call him. I don't think that was my question, Mr Murdoch. It was, it was a more subtle question. That Indeed it was. That the interchange between a sophisticated politician and a sophisticated newspaper proprietor would not be a hard-nosed commercial negotiation, how much to pay for something. It would be at a far higher and more subtle level. I'm afraid I don't have much subtlety about me. Don't you, Mr Murdoch? No. OK. On election night 1992, The Sun ran a front page claiming it had defeated Neil Kinnock's Labour Party. Rupert Murdoch had attacked the paper's editor for breaking the golden rule and claiming power and influence. I did indeed give my hell of a bollocking. <laughs> well, that's very frank, Mr, Mr. Murdoch. But the, the, the point may be this, that you would not want it to appear that newspapers 
did have this influence over voters, because that might be said to be anti-democratic. Would you agree with that? I think saying anti-democratic is too strong a word, but I just thought it was tasteless and, and, and wrong for us. Uh, it, was, it was wrong in fact. We don't have that sort of power. And that was his theme of the day. The myth of the powerful magnate looming over British politics for decades, trading policies for support. All wrong, he said. Nothing could be further from the truth.